Homework 16, the central limit theorem for proportions, video four, probabilities involving proportions. If you'll recall from the previous series of videos, when we learned about the distribution, the sampling distribution of sample means of X bars, then we could answer questions like, what's the probability that in this sample, their average is less than 50 or something like that. We can do the same thing with proportions. For example, the National Coffee Association reports that 62% of U.S. adults drink coffee daily. Okay? A random sample of 225 U.S. adults is selected. A. Calculate mu sub p hat and sigma sub p hat. Pretty easy once we know p and n. B. Calculate the probability that less than 67% of the sample drinks coffee daily. So we take 225 people and ask them, do you drink coffee? We want to know the probability that less than 67% of them say yes. All right, so the first part's pretty easy because we already know how to do it. But before we jump into it, here's a rule of thumb moving forward. The further we go, the more word problems we're going to see. And in these word problems, you're going to be given lots of values up front. It's important to identify which variables they represent. For example, when we say that 62% of U.S. adults drink coffee, we are saying a percent of a population that has a characteristic, a percent of U.S. adults that drink coffee. Since it's the percent of a population, that's p hat. Excuse me, it's not. P hat is the percent of a sample. This is a percent of a population. We're being told that P is equal to 62% or 0.62. What about the 225? That's just sample size. That's lowercase m. So it's important at the outset of any word problem to identify the variables that the given values represent. Now let's answer the question. If we're going to find mu sub p hat, we have to use its formula, and I use that word very loosely, because mu sub p hat is just equal to p. It's not a formula, it's an observation or a statement. Of course, p in this problem is 0.62, so not a whole lot to go on there to do there. Now, sigma sub p hat requires some calculations because its formula is a tall square root with a fraction. Everything is under the square root. The numerator is p times the quantity 1 minus p, and the denominator is n. So if we just substitute our values, p is 0.62. 1 minus p is 1.62. And it might be prudent to figure out the subtraction problem first and n is still 225. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and replace the subtraction problem with its answer. Its answer is 0.38. It is still inside the square root even though I wrote it above. So let's put this in a calculator. And the homework will ask you to round to four decimal places as necessary. At least that's what it did for this question. Okay, 0.62 times 0.38 divided by 225 equals, and now let's square root that to four decimal places, 0 0.0324. Okay, so that part's pretty easy, it's just formulas. By the way, on your next test, you will be allowed to use your notes, so it will be your responsibility to have your formulas written down. Just letting you know. Okay. So what about part B? Well, first off, we're being asked a probability question, which is a dead giveaway. We should start by writing it capital P. But the probability of what? That something is less than 67%. So let's write it as a decimal. Something is less than 67%. But what is that something? The percent of the sample is less than 67%. And the variable for the percent of a sample that has a characteristic is p hat. 
So the probability question we're attempting to answer is the probability that the percent of this sample that drinks coffee daily is less than 67%. Can we use the Z chart on this? No, this isn't a Z. Is this normally distributed? I should have asked that first, but let's just check it real quick. Remember that the criteria for being normally distributed is that n times p is at least 10, n is 225, p is 0.62. I don't know what 62% of 225 is, but I know it's bigger than 10 because 10% 10 of this is 22.5. So 62% would be much more. And the same thing for n times 1 minus p, which would be 225 times 0.38 but I'm pretty confident that's also greater than or equal to 10 because again, 10% 10 of 225 is 22.5, so 38% is gonna be more than that. So it's definitely gonna be greater than 10. So what that means is our P hats are approximately normal. They look like a bell curve, and so we can treat them as such. Now, I could draw the bell curve of this right now for my P hats because I know what their mean is. Their mean is 0.62, that's what we go in the middle. And the standard deviation, which I'm just gonna list, was 0 0.0324. What would the picture look like for this probability? Well, remember, that probability corresponds to area under this curve. And if it's a probability of being less than something, then that's the probability of being to the left of under this curve. So if we can find this area, the area to the left of 0.67 in this bell curve, then we have our answer. But we find areas using the Z chart. This is not a Z problem, it's a P hat problem. So we have to convert it to a Z problem, which means we need a conversion formula. There's a formula to convert p hat to z. We've already seen two versions of this convert stuff to z formula before. The original version was z equals x minus mu over sigma. In the previous video, we tricked all of these out into x bars by turning the x into an x bar and subscripting both the mu and the sigma with an x bar. But we don't need to trick this one out into x bars. We need to trick it out into p hats. So let's subscript the mu of the p hat. We know what that equals. That's a sigma, by the way. Let's subscript the mu of the p hat. But do we subscript the x with the p hat? No, we just flat out replace it with the p hat. So there's the conversion formula that will convert a p hat value into a z score and allow us to use the z table. So what p hat value do we want to convert here? The answer is the value that we're comparing p hat to. This p hat's being compared to 0.67, so we need to convert p hat equals 0.67 to z equals something. So let's just use the formula. Take a p hat value, subtract the average of all the p hats, which was 0.62, it's up there, and divide by the standard deviation of all the p hats, 0 0.0324. Now, because we're gonna use our z table and our z's only have two decimal places, we only need to round this one to two decimal places. 0.67 minus 0.62 equals, and divide that by 0 0.0324. So if I round it to two decimal places, the z score, that p hat equals 0.67 translates to, or converts to, is z equals 1.54. That means that the answer to this probability question is equal to the answer to this probability question. The probability that z is less than 1.54. So if I were to draw a picture of this, where the axis represents z, Remember, in a standard normal distribution, the mean is zero, the standard deviation is one. And we are looking for the probability that z is less than 1.54.
1.54 would be to the right of zero. And so we need to know the area to the left of that because it is a less than probability. Our Z chart tells us left areas. I'm not going to draw the bare bones image of the Z chart up there, but I'll flip to it and remind you that the two digits on either side of the decimal tell us which row to look in, and the second decimal digit tells us which column. So in the Z chart, if we go to the 1.5 row, go underneath the 0.04 column, I invite you to get out of Z chart, maybe pause the video if you need to. The area that we look up is 0.9382. Or as a percent, 93.82% which visually means that 93.82% of this bell curve is shaded on either one, but contextually means that if 62% of all Americans drink coffee daily and we pick 225 people at random, there is a 93.82% chance that 67% um, or less of them drink coffee daily. We're going to do another example, but it's actually pretty straightforward. The hardest part is wrapping your mind around what you're actually saying. The mechanics in doing the math are pretty straightforward. Uh, the mechanics behind converting the p hat value to a z using this formula, and then using the z chart accordingly. We'll take a look at one more example. 